corrosion on an aluminium boat and haphazard is now 30 years old so she's been around for a bit so let's have a look what's happened to haphazard how it was set up and what corrosion actually does have bought this boat i didn't get a chance to see it i had to get a surveyor to go out to have a look at the boat check it out for me and the first thing they came back was there's no anodes on the hull and straight away that doesn't sound right you know because I'm a metal boat guy I've built a couple of steel boats and sailed them around and this is my first aluminium boat and realistically <clears throat> you hear all the horror stories about aluminium like you mention aluminium boat to anyone any other boaters they're going to come back with the same old penny in the bilge and the you know the thing's going to dissolve on you like sitting in the marina you hear all those stories the horror stories and maybe some of them are true but it really doesn't paint a very good picture for aluminium so managed to get hold of the original owner and builder of this boat who also sailed her for 20 years and uh, he said that he knows about aluminium boats and and uh, and what has to be done and it's all been set up correctly one of the things he did was on the boat that I found a little bit unusual is that the battery earth the earth for the batteries is connected to the hull with a wire doesn't make sense to me but it's done like that the keel is stainless steel and it has a cable that runs from the keel to the hull and that bonds electrically the hull to the keel they're two dissimilar metals stainless steel down the bottom there's a big lump of lead so you've got lead stainless steel which is durex stainless steel which is super duper stainless steel really much more corrosion resistant than other types and so that's electrically bonded and then there's two anodes on the side of the keel and that's the only anodes on the boat which is kind of strange like the whole boat does not have any anodes there's uh, nothing on the aluminium hull now I can see one place where there was probably a anode there's a stainless steel bolt sitting in the bilge and uh, it's been cut off on the outside I would say that was possibly an anode that they decide they didn't need and it cut it off so and then even then I've got a, you've got this stainless steel bolt sitting in the bilge sitting in the water and it's like brand new there hasn't got any corrosion around where the two dissimilar metals are touching each other there's also a cable on the rudder stock the rudder stock is stainless steel and that has a cable connecting that to the hull to electrically bond that to the hull so I'm going to go over a bit of the corrosion that's on the boat probably the most uh, noticeable is on the cabin sides there's some blistering underneath the paint that uh, from what I hear is kind of normal I have tried to sand it off and retouch it up with some epoxy uh, but it, it wasn't really uh, done properly I think I sanded it with a sanding disc and I think that just polished it and probably need something so it sticks better anyway I'll have to tackle that again if anyone has some pointers on that that would be helpful the other type of corrosion is in the bilges I can't get to every part of the bilge but the main parts of the bilge and haphazard always has water in the bilge I haven't been able to keep a dry bilge and mainly the reason behind that is the mast having a mast with all the holes with the ropes that go through so the water gets in and I put a, a box underneath the mast and a drain and with a bilge pump in it it kind of works probably gets some majority but uh, it must be some water getting past somewhere so as a result there's always water in the bilge and for a metal boat you can have a completely dry bilge and that would be nice steel boat my last steel boat had a completely dry bilge there was no 
there was no uh, water in it. So uh, this one also has a leaking hatch. So this is the corrosion. It's just absolutely really minor, super minor. There's a couple of little marks on the aluminium and that's from water sitting in, in those spots in between the stringers and not draining. Uh, so yeah, 30 years and that's all there is. This is a really good example on how corrosion resistant aluminium is because the stanchions, the handrails on the side of the boat are, are constructed in a very, in this way that they've got a piece of pipe it's being welded to the boat and then the stanchion fits on the inside of that pipe and then it has a stainless steel bolt that holds it in and water runs down the pipe goes in through fills up with water so basically you've got this area that's full of water probably salt water and there's gunk in there and what have you and then it has a stainless steel bolt going through now that you would think would be a recipe for corrosion but I recently broke one and decided to replace the whole lot and raise it up another 100 mil and I'll tell you what that was a good idea because now I feel a way safer walking on the side decks before they were really just knee height and now they've gone up 100 mil uh, that's four inches in America and uh, it's just way better. But anyway, get back to the corrosion. I took them all off and I inspected all the pipe. All the pipe were really in top, top, you know, pretty good condition. I had one that was really difficult to get out and I had to, you know, I had every which way trying to do it. I broke it several times and I ended up cutting it off and then using a hacksaw blade to cut a section of the pipe out is the only way I could get it out and I was thinking oh well that one's going to be corroded and I pulled it out it wasn't it wasn't corroded at all it's just a really super duper tight fit so yeah that was a really good improvement for the boat very important to have a good barrier coat of epoxy underwater I'm in the water once a month to check for barnacles and scour the slime off here's another good example of an aluminium boat next door it's an Omni, beautiful boat, and has no paint on the sides, just bare aluminium. I think that aluminium is a lot more sturdy than what people make out, and maybe it's just the way this boat's been set up that's superior, because there are plenty of boats in aluminium that have had problems and do have problems, and I've seen some. And then there's some people that just do stupid things like there's some boats here that come out of the water and, uh, and they've got no barrier coat underneath. No barrier coat. And they just paint the anti-foul straight onto the aluminium. That can't be a good thing. So, and then, I, yeah, and of course they are pitting. It, you know, it's only a matter of time. Everything's aluminium on haphazard. And it's actually not even built very heavily. It's quite lightly built. It's probably only four millimeters on the hull, as far as I know. Three millimeters on the deck. So that's quite light, very lightly built for aluminium. So corrosion, you would say, is a concern because the boat is so thin on the plating. So 30 years old is a pretty good stint. And there's probably another 30 or maybe 90 or whatever years left, who knows? It really comes down to the owners and whoever takes the boat over from me because boats really do come down to maintenance and looking after. This inter-island ferry sank last week. The whole of Suva Harbour is full of wrecks and it seems like it's safer to sink in the harbour. I've made up this compilation of the visible wrecks in Suva Harbour and i hope you enjoy it and the video and until next time happy sailing
Oh, the man. 